This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or am learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. Okay, so I got about 70 grams of hexamine here. You can see they're nice and white. Um, little bars. I'm just going to you know, put them in my crucible, and I, I got some pliers, and they help break it down a little bit. Uh, you can see the smaller pieces. Then I'll just crucible all that, try to get it down into a powder form, so that I can dissolve it in some water. There it is, I got it nice and powderized with this. So if you want to see how I pour my powders into a round bottom flask with no you can get a powder funnel. I don't have one. So I just put a little bit at a time on a piece of paper. I fold it. And then I put my finger here so the hole is smaller than the round bottom. So the hole is small, smaller than the round bottom flask. But it, uh, it's big enough to let the stuff get through. And I just pour it in. See how easy that is? And I do a little bit more, a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. Now I already got a stir bar in there. You can't see it. Uh, now I put 100, I got this 100 milliliters of hot water. I just got a lot of the spigot, uh, hot, hot spigot water out of the faucet. And I'm going to turn on the stir bar. And we're going to see if we can dissolve at least most of that, if not all of it. So anyways, you can see there's stuff that isn't... Uh, dissolving but you'll remember from my how to get hexamine video I went over this brand which is what I got expedition fuel tablets and it says this less than 99 percent hexamine less than one percent wax so all I can do is guess and say that means probably 98 percent hexamine and one percent wax and one percent something else so whatever this impurity is I want to make up for it. So so far I put in five and a half tablet or five and a quarter tablets of hexamine. So I put another half a quarter, I mean another quarter in here to total five and a half altogether. And then I'll filter this out and that should make up for this loss. Hopefully by doing that I will have 70 grams of hexamine in the pot when I'm done. Keep in mind at room temperature 85 Point three grams, 85 grams, and that goes into 100 milliliters of water. I got 100 milliliters of water in there, and I did have it warm when I put it in there. And I only have 70 grams instead of 85.3 grams. So it should be enough to have everything, you know, dissolve in there. Okay, there's what I filtered out. You can see it's in my stir bar. That's wax and who knows what else. Uh, but you can see... It's a little bit of uh, contaminants there. So hopefully that's all the contaminants though. Um, here's my setup. Uh, you can see it's nice and crystal clear now. <laughs> Basically I'm just set up for a distillation. <laughs> now you can see I have a two mic flask because I need to keep track of the pot temperature, the reaction temperature. I'm not worried about up here where the steel head is. Uh, normally you do this with an oil bath, you know, you can use anything, uh, mineral oil, uh, mineral oil or uh, vegetable oil even, any, anything, uh, heat it up, uh, but I, I, can't, I can't have my house smelling like oil, uh, so I'm just going to use a flame, but I raised this up a bit, so hopefully the heat can dissipate a little bit from the flame and uh, get a more, because you want a more even heat, heat, you know, but screw it. Uh, and now I need to add 200 milliliters of hydrochloric acid that I have in the freezer right now cooling down. All right, so what, what have we done so far? We got some hexamine and we purified it by putting it in water, uh, dissolving it and filtering out the impurities. I want you to look at, this is the formula for hexamine. 
Now, if you add six waters, right, six O's and six H2's to this, right, this CH will turn into six formaldehydes. These four nitrogens will turn into four ammonias, right? Uh, so how do we get the hexamine to decompose like that, to break down like that? Well, hydrolysis needs a lot of water and some protons. So here's the equation to hydrolyze hexamine. Here's the molar masses. Uh, this one's for water. Um, you can see I multiplied this by 4 because there's 4 moles. I multiplied this by 6 because there's 6 moles. And then I took all of them, every last one of them, times 0.5. So this is how much hexamine I used. This is how much hydrochloric acid I'm going to add. And the water, I just put, I used a lot, of, a lot of extra water. I only needed 54 milliliters. Remember, we used 100 milliliters just to dissolve the hexamine. And plus, there's, you know, there's a lot of water, almost 70% or 72% water in HCl. So, we definitely got the water covered, okay? Why are we putting in four moles of HCl when you only need a little bit? You only need some protons, it says. Well, because when this ammonia is made, we don't want ammonia. We want ammonium chloride. Right? So the ammonia, there's going to be four moles of ammonia. You need four moles of hydrochloric acid, right? So the ammonia is going to break down into ammonium hydroxide in the water, and it'll be a base, and you'll have your hydrochloric acid as an acid. What's it going to make? Salt water, ammonium chloride. <laughs> so I want you to notice the ratio that this breaks down into, though. It's six moles of formaldehyde and four moles of ammonium chloride. Now here's the equation on how to make the actual methylamine. You take ammonium chloride, some formaldehyde, and it will make this ammonium, ammonium. Uh, cation, which will, uh, the chloride will be the, uh, the anion, and so you'll make this ammonium, uh, thing here, this iron or salt or whatever, plus water. Then if you have another, oh, then if this, this uh, imine, right, this imine chloride salt reacts with another formaldehyde plus the water you made to make your methylamine in the salt form. So it'll actually be methyl ammonium chloride. But it also makes formic acid, right? One of the formaldehydes goes to make uh, the methyl ammonium thing, and the second formaldehyde goes to make this, this formic acid. So if you break it down, it's really one ammonium chloride to two formaldehydes, right? Then you make one of your product and one of formic acid. But why is this what you usually see? It usually says four ammonium chlorides plus six formaldehydes and then you get three moles of this and three moles of that. Why is that? Because they're adding, you want, to, you want one more excess of ammonium chloride. It helps your reaction, it helps shift the equilibrium or something like that. Uh, or, you know, since you have a lot in solution, it will help prevent another reaction from happening. I, I'm not, I, it could be a combination of all those things. But you need an extra mole. So if you break this down, this take a mole off of here, this would actually be 3 to 6, right? 3 to 6, or if you divide them both by 3, it'd be 1 to 2, right? So it is this formula, it's just they're adding in, it, it is a 1 to 2 ratio, it's just they added in an extra mole, you know, on top of it. But an extra mole, you know, with this ratio, 4 to 6. And you can see, when we break down the hexamine, we get a 4 to 6 ratio. That's exactly what we want. So let's add that HCl. And we will make our, what, our formaldehyde and our ammonium chloride. And then that, we can reflux, right, and distill. And we can... Uh, 
distill out our byproducts while we produce our product. So let's do that. Alright, I put my HCL in the freezer for a while to cool it down, remember? And I'm just going to add it. Not that concerned about it being exothermic because we're going to heat it up right after this. I have about 202 milliliters, slightly over. Okay, now we want the this thermometer here, the actual reaction pot, to be at 100 Celsius. And then we can start distilling out. As you can see, we are already set up. Okay, so I took a long time to get this up to start distilling. I left it at 100 Celsius for a while. I couldn't get nothing to come over, although it would come into the still head. As you can see, it's distilling now. There goes a drop. Uh, I have the pot at 104C, and I'm going to keep it there. As you can see, it's got a good boil. Uh, so basically, that's all i got to do is keep it at 104C. But what i got to do also is every once in a while, and you can only use like aspirator strength, uh, vacuum. You can't use like a, well, I guess you could, but uh, you don't want to put a lot of vacuum on this because you'll end up bumping the entire thing up out of there and into your receiving class. What you want to do is turn your vacuum pump on, right? And don't put it on there. Just kind of touch it to the, to the nipple. And you'll see, watch the pot as you're doing it because you don't want to bump it all the way up. You don't want to put it on there because then the vacuum gets stuck. You know what I mean? You just want to boop, boop, boop a couple times. Do that every maybe 10, 15 minutes uh, because it'll help get the CO2 out of the pot. And it'll help, you know, speed up the reaction, ship the equilibrium and all that kind of jazz. Okay, let me try and show you what it looks like when I put the vacuum on. You can't keep it on there you will definitely bump everything up into the up into the condenser okay here it goes now when I do it I'm going to be watching my pot so I know it I'm not going to overdo it see how the bubbles Whoop. see how I, I just do it a little bit just for a couple seconds anyway you do that every 10 minutes or so 15 minutes get, get some of that CO2 out of there so this is, I'm guessing, going to take about four to six hours. Uh, it's about 10.30 right now. Uh, so we'll see how long this takes. Basically, I'm just distilling it and keeping the pot, not the steel head, the pot. So I got this thermometer right here. Not up here, down here. This leads down into the pot. You can see it down there. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to keep that at 104C. I don't want it to get past 108, that's for sure. But I'm going to keep it at 104, give or take a, a degree or two. Make sure it keeps distilling. And when it stops distilling, I'll get back with you. All right, it's been, uh, let's see here. Um, it's been three hours exactly. And I can't get anything to come over. Pretty much everything came over between 104 and 105 Celsius. Uh, you can see what's, what's up there. Still looks clear. Nothing doesn't even look like anything happened really. Uh, here's the receiving. There's what I got in the receiving flask. That's a 500 milliliter flask. This pot was a thousand milliliter flask. So we're going to let this cool down and see what, if anything, precips out. Hopefully some ammonium chloride will precip out. Well, I've never done this experiment before. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm definitely going to post post this and we'll, I'm curious to see myself. I'm so curious. Anyways, enjoy. Have a great day and always remember science is great.